Good morning. It's obvious I was lying during the press conference. Banks are, in fact, not fine. I just have to make them cheaper next time for my dear friend, Jamie Diamond. These regional banks were too addicted to sucking on my money printer. More than 100 banks died in 2008. We've only had like three so far. We still have a long way to go. Fuck your puts. Fuck your calls. Jay Powell has you by the balls. God bless my money printer. GM to all the FOMC survivors. In this video, we're breaking down, did Jerome Powell just lie to everybody about the banks, stating they're all pretty safe right now, stiff upper lip? So is this more fuel to the fire for Bitcoin as a result? We're gonna jump into this in the video. Make sure you get the GMs rolling down in the comment section and let's jump in. So Chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, lied to the public yet again yesterday, raising interest rates by 25 basis points and saying that the banks are all okay. But have we not noticed yet that if you merge Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell together, you actually get Jamie Dimon? Coincidence? I think not. JP Morgan likely to be one of the net beneficiaries to these regional banks collapsing as they assume more power in the banking sector. So let's quickly check out Jerome's opening gambit here because this was super interesting. Before talking about the interest rates, he has to give a little bit of reassurance and confidence to the public that the banks are okay. Listen to this. Before discussing today's meeting, uh, let me comment briefly on recent developments in the banking sector. Conditions in that sector have broadly improved since early March and the US banking system is sound and resilient. So the fact that he had to have a preamble before the conference to tell you everything is okay, we're sound and resilient in the banking sector, that pretty much should tell you everything you need to know. After he spoke, then we saw this, US regional bank stocks after hours. So after the day's trading was done, PacWest down 60%. Western Alliance down 30%, Metropolitan Bank minus 20%, Valley National minus 15%, Home Street minus 11%. Sound and resilient doesn't seem so. Then the glaring stat at the bottom there, total market cap lost in the US banking sector just crossed 2.5 trillion this year. Meanwhile, the Fed said the system is strong crazy times to be alive. So Balaji quickly on this one as well, when PacWest Bank Corp is forced into receivership, it will be the fifth largest bank failure in US history, and it will come less than a week after the failure of First Republic Bank, the second largest bank to fail in US history. We seem to be making a lot of firsts here, not a good sign. So here is the Pacific West Bank Corp stock price there, falls off the cliff after hours, and then early this morning, we're getting these kind of news headlines coming in. PacWest explores potential sale after shares plummets, PacWest considers possible sale, strategic options, and US banking contagion spreads as PacWest shares tumble. Doesn't seem too strong and resilient yet again. So what I garnered from the actual press conference itself was Jerome comes out, he is stiff upper lip, gives his statements, and doesn't stray too far from the party line. He's obviously rehearsed what he's gonna say. And then you have the press members getting to ask their questions, all of them ask pretty much the same questions, but with slightly different wording, and he regurgitates the same answers. So it was pretty much a nothing burger yesterday, but the fact we have banks collapsing in terms of their stock prices after his speech, due to the fact he just raised rates by another 25 basis points, and this is what is putting all that pressure on these regional banks. Well, the market is starting to call bullshit here. So this is what the market is pricing in for the next Fed meeting. He did talk about the potentiality of a pause. He didn't state the word pause, but more We've removed some of the wording from our forward guidance around increasing rates further down the line. So essentially we're starting to see like the first cracks in what will be a Fed pivot, but the market is now pricing in a 94% chance that the Fed does no longer hike. Skipping forward to July then, this would also be a pause. So pause in June, continued pause in July, but a 44% chance of a rate cut in July. So coming back to the rates that we just saw the month previous. So there seems to be a bit of misalignment between what the market thinks and what Jerome is stating here. Now the most bullish chart out there is gold. Unfortunately not BTC but actual gold. So if we just break down this monthly chart on gold, this has now breached a new all-time high today. It was printing 2080s for an ounce of gold earlier. 
on the monthlies. This was the previous like all time high monthly close for gold back in July of 2020, around 1973 per ounce. We did then at the end of April here print a new high and then we're obviously just four days into May, so not too much data yet. But the fact we came down, back tested this previous high as support and now have started to go up yet again and actually tick a new all time high today suggest we could see some bullish continuation. This is one heck of a bullish chart. And the kind of chart that if I was looking at this as an altcoin perspective, I'll be looking to buy this breakout. So the bank's failing after hours. So talk now on to what the heck happens next. So Anson posted this. So if they extend the BTFP, bank term funding program to backstop all deposits, Bitcoin goes to infinity, right? Because of course, what we've seen is this means that the Fed has to essentially bail out all the regional banks if this is approved. So this is like speculation in terms of what could happen over maybe this weekend. And what we've previously seen is that bank failures are bullish Bitcoin. You don't need to try and 150 IQ the situation. It's pretty simple. Banks fail, Bitcoin up. That is the mantra. That is what Bitcoin was created for. So the Bitcoin chart here, over the last few days, we were looking at 27K as a pivot point for bears. That has not been touched. Then recently, 28,000 was the kind of line in the sand to see if we start to slip below this, not too healthy. Yesterday, a few weeks to the downside, around 28.2 as Chair Jay Powell was speaking, but now above 29,000 bucks with gold at all-time high territory. So banks fail, Bitcoin up. Let's see if this does continue here. I would like to see Bitcoin really start to push up here into the 30Ks. And then of course, 31,035 is the top tick so far of this 2023 rally. The DXY is looking pretty weak. Gold up, Bitcoin up. Let's see if this does progress. But I am feeling fairly confident that we do have the right catalysts here and the right narrative for Bitcoin for some continuation. So I thought this one was quite interesting. You're waiting for Jerome Powell to tell you the monetary policy decisions of the Fed, what's gonna happen in the US. The whole world depends on this. And then you have the alternate financial system of Bitcoin, where all the halvings, the issuance of Bitcoin are already programmed in. Next block halving, 2024, around March, April, apparently, if we just look at NiceHash here, we're less than 365 days away. It's programmed in, we have assurance that this will take place, whereas we don't know what the erratic decisions of the Fed may be for the true financial system, but this, the alternative, is giving us a lot more clarity here. So mantra of the day, wear orange, buy some BTC. So a quick update here on the cheeky sector that is pulling a lot of liquidity in, which is of course the meme coins. Yet again, we're seeing Pepe look like it was potentially dead and buried yesterday. A lot of people saying top was in, but it bounces back yet again. So this is super interesting, just following along. I've bought a little bit of Pepe. I did buy the dip last night. I've also got a few other horses in the race, but don't really want to talk about those because, you know, things could be rug pulls in this sector and it is just gambling Wild West stuff. But Pepe is now a half a billion dollar market cap coin. So I do think this one will actually stay the course and be around. The meme makes sense in terms of internet culture. And if we just look at the Shiba Inu chart here, are we due one final big blow off leg here for Pepe? Now this is really interesting because we kind of had this already take place over the last couple of weeks and we're now starting to chop sideways and consolidate. But could we have the one last hurrah in which you will cash in? Well, you should do. Well, in my mind, you should be thinking like that. If we do get this final big pump, it is time to really take the chips off the table at that point. When you look at the SHIB chart here and you look at the dates, they also align quite nicely. So not only does some of these numbers kind of work out in terms of what Pepe coin has done so far, but also this, the final blowout here in May of 2021. Could this happen in 2023 for Pepe following the Shiba Inu chart? I don't know, but it smells a little bit odd. History doesn't repeat, it often rhymes. So this is kind of my thinking on this one. If Pepe does have some big blow off here, I think that is the final leg up on this one for a bit of time. But what we are seeing, which could potentially add more fuel to the fire, is of course it listed on perps, on the likes of BitMEX. And this is what happened earlier, liquidated short on Pepe. So they had to buy back a load of tokens, blown out, shorting this to the tune of 40,000 US dollars. And then you look at the funding rates on Pepe as well. Quite funny here, 
you can see they're currently all highly, highly negative and predicted to go even more negative. So this would mean that the meme of Pepe, its max pain would be to go higher and blow out more shorts. As you blow out the shorts, they have to buy up more Pepe and this could be that fuel to the fire, as I say, for a final leg up. So definitely watching this one, it's of interest. Not too much else going on, hey? So let's embrace this one for the culture. So make sure you do drop me a GM in the comment section down below. Keep the positive vibes rolling. And if you want to put your Bitcoin predictions, are we going to go up from here or back down? I kind of think banking sector failures are bullish here. That's just my two cents on the scenario. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.